this week, Audi unveils the new A1. We drive the A5 Sportback and I'm at the ultra-exclusive Salon Privé for a peek at the latest handbag holder. It's not every decade we can say it, but this is an all new Saab. The new 9.5 saloon has been a long time coming. It's 12 years since the last one was launched. On the evidence of these pictures, it's been well worth the wait. It's got that classic Saab wraparound windscreen and a hockey stick side window graphic, but it's on the inside that the real improvements have been made. Look, this one actually lives up to all that fighter pilot marketing guff. Well, kind of. It's going to be officially unveiled at the Frankfurt Motor Show in September, ready for sale early next year. Let's just hope that Saab can survive long enough to see it through. This week, the Rolls-Royce Ghost made its official UK debut at the Salon Privé, where we met interior designer Alan Shepard. So, come on then, how many have you sold today? Um, a fair amount, I would say. A fair amount. We're into double digits. Uh, well into double digits. It's attracting significant interest, not particularly from the people that we'd normally expect. There's a lot of interest from women. There's a lot of interest from people that have been running other cars from other brands. And it has got one fantastic gadget. I mean, this is something I picked up you earlier. You brought your handbag. I have brought my handbag and watch this. What, what was the inspiration for this? Well, isn't it annoying when your lady friends have the handbags on the floor of the car or they're complaining that it's fallen over and everything's fallen out and um, it actually has a little home to live in there. And this squeezes it according to the weight and size of the handbag? Yes, in the two leather strips here we have some sensors. It detects the area of the weight of the handbag and then basically gives it another little pinch of about 10 to 15 millimetres to make sure that it's securely held in place without actually crushing it or damaging the leather. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> While Lotus is busy keeping up with demand for the stunning new Avora, Lotus Engineering has presented an electric city car concept. The car runs on lithium-ion batteries, has space for three adults and a child, and has a footprint that's even smaller than a Toyota Igo. Lotus says it's entirely feasible that such a model could go into production as early as 2015. Just don't expect a Lotus badge. Audi's announced that the new mini rivaling A1 will go on sale in the UK early next year. Built in Brussels, it'll be available as a three and five door sportback. Audi also teases with a glimpse of next year's A8, together with board member Michael Dick. And yes, that is his real name. Take one city car, three coloured dots, a warehouse, some fancy computer programming, and what do you get? The Toyota IQ font, designed by the car itself. This week we drove the niche busting RDA5 Sportback, a sort of coupe cum saloon. It does look really handsome in the metal, but to be honest, it's no more spacious or practical than the A4 saloon. Audi reckons the A5 Sportback embodies the Gran Turismo philosophy, but we think the driving experience is a little bit numb for it to be called a proper GT car. But if you've got 28 grand hanging around in your wallet and you're after something that little bit different, it may be worth a look in. It was a great week for the Nissan plant near Sunderland when it was announced that it will receive £380 million of investment to start producing batteries for Nissan's new electric car. The move is expected to create 200 new jobs. It was a bad week for the Ford Fiesta as the two 800 brake horsepower rally versions purpose-built to win the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb in Colorado didn't. The plan was to use this victory to help introduce the Fiesta to the US market, but that was obviously before finding out the cars would be over a minute off the pace, hampered by engine problems, and be crashed. Maybe next year, guys. Don't miss our full coverage of the frightfully posh Salon Privé show.